What's up folks, Redshift just released a new version 3.5.17 and today we're gonna go over one of the new features which is the jitter node. The jitter node is a really helpful new utility that can help add variation to your materials, whether it be a color value, a float value, or an integer value. So let's jump into how we can use this. Here we have a simple scene with three spheres. Each has the same Redshift standard shader added to them with the jitter node plugged into the base color value. Select the jitter node. If your input ID is set to name ID, the color will vary depending on each object's name. Pretty simple, right? In order to vary the color values, go down to the hue parameters and increase the hue variation max while decreasing the hue variation min. The larger the gap between the min and max values, the more variation you'll see in your color. Right now, each name is different, one, two, three, etc. But if I change them to all be the same, one, 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 for example, they will all maintain the same color value. If you change the name of one sphere, then only that sphere's color is going to change. All right, let's switch these spheres back to the original names. We can use the same scene to demonstrate the object ID function. Add Redshift render tags to each object and activate their object IDs. Make sure to give each object a different ID value. Then select the jitter node and change the input ID to object ID. Now each has a different color value dependent on the object IDs in the render tags. You can also select your jitter node and change the hue seed to change the color values. Altering the saturation parameters will desaturate or saturate your color values depending on your settings. The value parameters control how far the color value can be offset from the source's original value, essentially just making the colors darker or brighter depending on the settings. But before we get to this next example, if you're finding this video helpful, please throw a like and comment down below, and let's jump into this next scene. In this scene, we have a toy plane model that's been added to a cloner, generating this grid of planes. With the jitter node, we want to vary the color of the plane from clone to clone. Let's open up the main material for the plane and see how we can do this. The first thing to note is the instance mode of the cloner. You can use the name ID input with the standard instance mode, but it will not work with the render instance or multi instance modes. Instead, you need to add a integer user data node to your material. Connect this to the user data attribute of your jitter node. Select the jitter node and change the input ID mode to user data ID. Go back to the integer user data node and under the attribute name, add the redshift MoGraph ID attribute, which is just the text RSMGID. This will allow you to use the render instance and multi instance modes while still adding variation to your materials. The jitter node can vary more than just the color value of your material. It can also vary float and integer values. In this example, we have a pile of metal objects all with the same material applied. I have the diffuse texture plugged into the color property of a jitter node. This allows me to vary the color of each object. But I can also take the float value parameter from the jitter node and plug it into the metalness value of the standard redshift material. You should see an immediate variation between the objects. Float values are numbers that fall in the range of 0 to 1. You can only plug these values into the proper parameters. The integer value from the jitter node could be plugged into a parameter like the IOR of the reflection. This varies the reflectiveness between each of the objects. I also took the integer value and plugged it into the height scale of my bump map to vary the bump from object to object. It was hard to see in the render view, so I rendered out a couple stills to the picture viewer. When I switch back and forth from one image to another, you can see how the bump varies. You can also use the jitter node with particles. In this scene, I've done a simple X particle simulation. I'm generating custom objects using the redshift render tag on my emitter. I have a yellow material on my duck object. The yellow diffuse texture is plugged into my jitter node. If you try to use the name ID or object ID inputs to alter the color value, you won't get any variation on your particles. Instead, connect an integer user data node to the user data property of the jitter node. Under the attribute name parameter of the integer user data node, type RSPID, or Redshift Particle ID. This attribute will allow you to vary the color of your particles using the jitter node. That was a quick overview of the new jitter node in Redshift. I hope you found this video helpful. You can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter, links down below. I also have a Discord, which you can find down below. 
The Discord is honestly pretty dead at the moment, but I would love if people were getting more active and asking questions and helping each other out. Um, so the Discord is definitely a work in progress, but it's something I'd love to improve over time. So if you want to come say hi, hop into there. And I will see everybody in the next video.